Hello, everybody, and welcome to our very first podcast, We Have Parkinson's. I'm your host, Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with my co-host, Brian Baker. Hello. Hello. Uh, I want to welcome anyone who is tuning in. Parkinson's patients, caregivers, family members, doctors, pharma and medical companies, and everyone in between to hear and learn more about what it's like to live with PD. Brian and I are both young onset Parkinson's patients, which means we were both diagnosed under the age of 50. I'm still 39 until next month. How, how old are you? I'm 46. I was diagnosed at 40. You're 46? I am. I'm oh. getting old. I didn't, I don't, I, I wrote, I had 45. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> not like throwing your age out there or anything, but uh, I am a little younger than you, so I'm just going to take that along with me. Yeah, I was a young, I was the youngest one for a long time. Then you came along and stole my title. I did. Now there's somebody else new. Did you know that there's actually somebody new in the gym and she's younger than me? Taking it away. Anyways, actually, let's, let's jump into that real quick. So um, we met at the gym. Correct. You don't hear that every day, right? Uh, we belong to a gym called PD Next Steps. It's here in Dublin, Ohio. Do you remember the first day that we met? I do not. You don't? No. Oh my gosh. Seriously? It was just another day oh. cussing out Melissa in my head. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, I remember the first day I came in. Um, I was, uh, well, by far the youngest person there besides yourself. It was a full class. It was on a Saturday. And I remember jumping in and just, I was all bubbly because I was super excited to finally have a community. Um, I was diagnosed in July of 2019. I get lost with COVID years. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. July of 2019. And um, I was just super excited to have a diagnosis that I was all for finding out anything I possibly could about how to make sure that I'm living the best life I possibly could. So I found Melissa uh, Carlson at PD Next Steps and I joined the gym right away and I was um, welcomed into the gym with our awesome community of people. And it was, it's been the best thing for me just from the sheer standpoint of, I had so many questions. I didn't know much about Parkinson's except for what I read um, and knowing that older people usually have it. And so we would talk after, you know, any of our classes and just, you know, ask each other what medications you're on, what doctors you're seeing. So that's what I remember of that yeah, first day. The community aspect of, of the gym and being around other people is, has been the biggest impact for me as well. Like not necessarily the exercise, but having, being able to talk to people about what, medications you're on what's working what's not working what doctors you're seeing what doctors you like what doctors you don't like it's just having somebody else's input and somebody else i always say that being able when i say i'm having a crappy day mm -hmm. you understand what i mean when i have a crappy day mm -hmm. where you know your husband or spouses or siblings or parents don't understand what it's like because they don't have the the same things going on yeah i remember we used to text each other i'm having a rough day how yeah. about you when did do uh did you join the gym so i was i was diagnosed in december and within a week i was in a gym uh, a pd class okay. right away um and i tell the story that i was in shape i've always been in the gym and i was in shape i thought i was in shape at least i went to a gym that focuses on pd and there was once again i was the youngest one in the class by a long shot mm -hmm. and i thought this isn't gonna be worth it and the next thing i know there's 70 year old ladies showing me how to work out <laughs> they were putting me in my place they were showing me in in if you haven't done a pd workout with melissa and with the group it's they they're serious workouts people come in there they think they're they're going to be like a silver sneakers mm -hmm. sit down and have coffee and donuts workouts and they're not they're 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 hard workouts i do remember that after the first workout i did i was walking away and i'm like oh my god i'm like that was really hard and like really sore and uh, one of the um, members of, of class, she was like, oh, I love to hear that. She's mm -hmm. like, somebody young coming in saying that this is hard. I'm like, it is. It really is. I could barely get my husband to come in to do it because it, it kicks his <laughs> butt. Um, but so 
Did you know what Parkinson's was when you were diagnosed? No, I think and I think I've shared the story a couple different times with some people. Like when I when they mentioned Parkinson's, I was like, "So what? We got to get a shot of penicillin? We what do we like <laughs> a Z pack? What what's the what is Parkinson's? Like I know Michael J. Fox had it, but that's all I knew about it. Yeah. I didn't know what it was, and I really thought like, you know, with what they were testing me for, they were testing me for they they said you know they give you like the three hundred different blood tests or whatever. And mm -hmm. they, they said it could be gonor the gonorrhea mask is Parkinson's and chlamydia mask is Parkinson's. Like it was the first time in my life I was hoping I had a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> so I was, um, you know, come on, cl come, come, come on, chlamydia, you can do it, you know? <laughs> um, but no, I was like, so what, we're going to take a shot of penicillin. We're taking a Z-pack. What, how do we get rid of this Parkinson stuff? Well, what did you come in? What symptoms did you come in with? So I originally thought I had carpal tunnel. So people at work started noticing things. I was typing with one hand. I was using two hands on my mouse. I started noticing things at home. I was shaving with my left hand, brushing my teeth with my left hand, mm -hmm. not using my right hand. And so I thought I had some carpal tunnel on my right side. Mm -hmm. Went to the doctor. She sent me for carpal tunnel test. The neurologist that did the carpal tunnel exam said, you know, you don't have carpal tunnel. And he looked at my handwriting on the forms. He said, is this your handwriting? And I said, yes. He noticed the small handwriting. Mm -hmm. um, he never sent the results back to my doctor. So they never followed up with me. So fast forward six months later, I thought it was all in my head. I was like, I'm making this stuff up. Yeah. Um, I turned on the channel, the news, and there was a thing on rock steady boxing. And I just happened to stop and listen to it. And they said what the early onset Parkinson's symptoms were. I had every one of them. Uh -uh. And I, so I called my doctor and I said, I think I got Parkinson's. And she's like, oh, uh, I'm sure you don't have Parkinson's, but let's get you back in yeah. here. Oh, interesting. That's I, I actually self-diagnosed as myself as well. But I, I did a bunch of research because I knew something wasn't right for like two years. And I went to see um, my first neurologist um, because another doctor noticed my uh, tremors. But a previous doctor said it could just be essential tremors. Went and saw my first neurologist and he was like, you know, you're just stressed and anxious. You know, you have two young kids, you work full time, like this and that. I'm like, no, I, I know I'm not. He's like, just exercise. So I'm like, great. So I started exercising and nothing, you know, was really helping and like the stiffness on the right side and my hands and like family started noticing different things of like my arm didn't swing and I, I didn't use my arm when I was like cooking and same thing with like my mouse and the keyboard. People were noticing that at work. So then I went to the movement specialist from there, and that's when she was able to diagnose me right in that same. Yeah. I went to the, my first neurologist said, he goes, like, you have Parkinson's like symptoms, but you're so young and I don't know, not sure if you have it. And he, he recommended a, a MDS uh, right away. He's like, he's a, let's really? get you. Yeah. He's like, uh, and I appreciate that. Like a neurologist not thinking he had all the answers. He's like, let's get you down to an MDS. No, I think that's really important too, because I think so many times people are, uh, they rely on their neurologist. Cause you think neurologist is a specialist, like it's a specialty, right? right. It's not just a primary care physician, but what I've been finding out and talking to other people is you really don't want to have just your neurologist do your diagnosis because they are not specialists in movements. So going to a movement disorder specialist is key to finalizing your diagnosis. And I, it drives me crazy when I talk to a, somebody that has Parkinson's or it was diagnosed with Parkinson's by a family physician. Oh, I know. And they and they said, well, I said, I said, well, what neurologist or movement disorder specialist are you seeing? And they're like, no, I just talked to my regular doctor. I was like, yeah. no, you, you, there's so many things that can mask as Parkinson's. And there's so many people misdiagnosed with Parkinson's mm -hmm. that I was like, you need to, like, I know several people here recently that have gotten misdiagnosed. Yeah. By their, and, they, and they load them up on sentiment or Carboliva or whatever. And that's so wrong. And these are serious drugs that you don't want to mess with because they like, you know, you have consequences of what the uh, side effects would be. And it's always trying to get the different medications right. So making sure that you see a specialist. A is good, uh, the best thing, my the, the movement disorder specialist I went to initially and saw, the best thing he said was, I'm not going to tell you when you go on medication. You tell me when you want to go on medication. Mm -hmm. And that's a good neurologist, a mm -hmm. good doctor, because he's letting you decide what's best for you. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I know we just like jumped right into things, but I just want to take a step back and say like, you know, what is Parkinson's? It is a neurodegenerative disease where cells responsible for pr producing your dopamine die off. Dopamine is essential for movement as it acts as a transmitter for signals from the brain to other parts of the body. Um, but 
Did I know that before I was diagnosed? Absolutely not. Now I know. And there's so many things that we're learning um, along the way. And it's been eye-opening, um, to say the least, of everything that I have learned. And I think the, the biggest thing that we're, what we're trying to bring to the table now is educating other people. Because just like you and I, you know, no matter what population, if you're um, young onset or just the regular population of Parkinson's, everybody needs educated. And you feel so alone out there at times. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's times where you're like, nobody understands what I'm going through. And just just having learning that the, of, of different communities that you can reach out to and get help is, is extremely important. But the funny thing is, I mean, there's so many of us. I mean, there are there's 10 million people worldwide that have Parkinson's. One million are in America. Lucky us, there's 4% of those people that are under the age of 50. Um but there are a lot of people out there. It's just nobody wants to talk about it because they're afraid for they don't know what they don't know. Right. But once you start learning about it, it's not I don't want to say it's not that bad because there are bad circumstances and bad cases that people have. But if you take care of yourself, if you exercise, you take the right medication on time, you can really live a really a good life. So in our last 30 seconds, I want to leave you with this. Parkinson's affects 1 million in the U.S., mostly men with an average age of 56. Those who are affected under the age of 50 are considered young onset patients. There is no cure, but exercise and taking medication on time can help reduce some of the symptoms. We all have our own journey. Talking about it with other PD patients helps us feel normal and not off on an island. For those caregivers out there, please be patient and educate yourself. We are okay. We just need you to try and understand or accept where we are coming from. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you learned a little bit about Parkinson's and feel a little less scared about the diagnosis.